how are you, buddy? Welcome to Options Brew TV Market Shot with Mark Phillips of Harvested Financial, the guru sitting beside me in Chicago somewhere. How are you? I'm doing very well, Lex. It's always good to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm in my casual garb today. You are always dressed up. I'm not. I'm kind of a t-shirt guy. So you're a t-shirt guy, but you do have the on-brand uh, hat and backdrop. Which that's right. I, I got I got the trade hawk hat. I got the trade year. I got the trade hawk. I got the options brew. You name it, I got it. So good. Okay. Bagged out. Let's let's get right into it. Today's episode is going to be a backspread ratio discussion. I and there's all kinds of names for this. I guess. I, what do you call it? The, you know, there are a lot of different ways to think about this. I think the way I have gotten used to calling this is a credit backspread okay. um, because, you know, backspread in the sense that like you, you are going to be long some convexity, uh, but you are receiving a credit for it. We'll get into all the details soon, but I think uh, like you point out, there are a lot of different ways to call this, um, but uh, very interesting spread we have on deck. Right. Yeah. So um, interestingly, I, when I first learned on the floor, I was, I was a backspreader. I mean, I didn't choose to be that, but I was taught that. So I had to, I had to morph a little bit and learn how to sell premium. But yeah, that's how I first learned. That's uh, I think that's very common, right? It, it's it's a little bit easier to kind of accept the sort of daily fate of lead that you're paying for that. Um, you know, in exchange for sleeping a little bit better at night and right. seeing positive numbers on your gaps. It's especially if you have like a, a backer who doesn't want to see all his money lost in one fell swoop. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Uh, green and uh, black numbers on the, on those wings are always better than red ones. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, let's hop into it. Go ahead. You have an example today? Yeah. So, you know, uh, market was down a little bit today and, you know, we're talking about this, you know, the taper might start to begin and whatnot. So, you know, people thinking about how to protect their equities. And I think it's kind of a relevant one to think about with this sort of credit backspread situation. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm just going to pull up a uh, spy. I can share my screen right here. Perfect. Uh, share my trade hawk. And you know, this is the type of spread that, uh, you know, you're going to want to uh, look, set at a little bit further duration, um, but probably actively manage it throughout its uh, life cycle. So um, I mentioned I've pulled up SPY right here, um, and I've got the October 15th expiration. So, okay. you know, a little less than two months out. Uh, that we're Perfect. Um, and, and so the way I like to think about setting this up um, is going first for the uh, 25 delta put. Um, and so, you know, we sell the 25 delta put right here. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like it's the 428. So I'm going to collect about $4.86 selling that put. Got it. Now, to sort of build into this, um, I'm going to buy back uh, the 10 delta um, put all the way down here. So the 10 delta looks to be the 398. So I've got a pretty big put spread on right here. Mm -hmm. I've got almost a $30 uh, put spread. It's actually right. exactly $30 put spread. Mm -hmm. So this looks like just a simple put spread. We've sold the higher strike put and we've brought right. back the lower strike put. Yeah. Got it. So this is just a one by one spread at the moment. This is just a one by one spread at the moment. Okay. We collect about 275, it looks like. Um, on this $30 vertical. Got um, it. Pretty far out of the money. Um, you know, the 25 delta, 10 delta, you know, you're relatively far out of money, relatively mm -hmm. wide. You're collecting about 10% of the, sure. the premium. Sure, and, sure. Uh, okay. So still a credit, but what makes this a will make this a back spread is that we actually get long options here. We're gonna get long net options mm -hmm. by buying two, in fact, of that 398 put. Got it. So now our ratio becomes two by one, right? Long that extra one, but mysteriously enough, still a credit. Hooray. Exactly. So we're net long options. Um, and we'll see in just a sec what that's going to look like in the what if. Um, mm -hmm. But because these are far enough out of the money and because the distance between them is, is wide enough, exactly right, we're going to collect a credit for putting this spread on. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So let's look at what the what if looks like here. So okay. what we're going to see is, you know, this $62, um, you know, from the current spot price anywhere north of here, we're going to keep that $62, 62 cents uh, that we've collected per, per spread. Okay. Um, 
That's because the credit that we, that's the credit, our original price, the 62, I must have, must have rounded 61, 62 cents, right? Exactly. Okay. So to the upside, that's the most we can make, right? That's the most we can make on this. Okay. Is that credit? Upside. You got it. Okay, good. Um, and then we're going to see that the, uh, there is a little bit of a, a negative P&L zone here. And that's from your short put spread. So you can right. think about that short put spread that you're short the uh, what was it, the 428 and you're long the 398. So that $30 put spread, mm -hmm. you know, if we land in this zone right down here, that's going to be where your sort of worst case scenario is. But sure. we'll talk about how to manage that in just a second. Right. Um, and that's at expiration. Obviously, we're looking at expiration here with the spread. So this is the worst case scenario at expiration. So there's a lot of uh, iterations in between now and expiration, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So go ahead. Sorry. There you go. But where the sort of back spread comes in here is to the downside. And that's where your net long options, that extra 398 put that you're long mm -hmm. is going to give you all this convexity to the downside. Right. right. So you become net long options below 398 and you're going to make dollar for dollar every point that, uh, you know, the SPY goes down below 398. Uh, your long net option will, put option will continue to perform. Right. Right. Exactly right. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So how do you, um, how do you trade this during the cycle? I mean, in the old days, you know, we had, it, you would get gamma, uh, as this thing goes down, you could, uh, you could cover some of those short deltas as the stock goes lower, you're getting shorter and shorter deltas when you have positive gamma, right? right. Um, it, it, any suggestions on how we might hedge this if at all? Yeah, so I like to think, you know, I think before we get into those specific details, it's really interesting to see sort of how this spread will evolve. Like you mentioned, this is at expiration, right. but most of that sort of loss comes at the expiration, right? So, sure. you know, even three weeks out, it's, it's uh, you know, would only be a worst case scenario of a thousand, you know, a month out, you know, your worst case is only 600. So right. as the stock drifts down in between, you're not going to see this huge loss marking in your book. Um, because there is still so much time because those 398, uh, you know, uh, the teeny puts that you're long, are going to start to pick up a lot of value and offset it. So, sure. you know, this, this isn't really going to see that worst case until expiration. I think that's really important um, because, you know, if stock does drift down in, in between here, you do have some of those opportunities to roll this, mm -hmm. um, that you could potentially roll it down a strike yeah, or strikes. Um, you could roll it out further in duration. Um, so managing this as stock drifts down, um, you know, you, you do have a couple of different options. Right. Okay, good. Um, and, then, and then I think another important aspect is that you are long Vega with this spread mm -hmm. and that you are actually going to be long Vega because of those 398s. And as stock drifts down, you know, we typically see that inverse relationship, right, between SPY and vol. So if SPY is going down, market's going down, vol tends to rise also. Right. So I think paying attention to where vol is going with this spread, um, you know, is really going to change the dynamics. So sure. you know, if I, I click vol up maybe five points, all of a sudden. Um, Our numbers look happier. I just saw it push up a little just bit. Pop? Yeah. Okay. I missed the pop. I was paying attention to my. my yeah. So you can yeah. see it, you know, right here, how this all became nice and green in a bigger way. Right. So vol moves up a couple clicks as stock moves down, all of a sudden your spread starts to look a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a relationship that we can sort of lean on here that you know, understanding the sort of second order dynamics of how vol will change and the implied vol of those options will change is really important when you have a spread like this. Right. Yeah. Um, and typically depending on the velocity of the down move and this in our, in our discussion, um, you know, it, uh, a fast move down is going to have a, a more profound effect on implied volatility, meaning um, there could be some fear, which means volatility is going to go higher and you're going to enjoy the benefits of that. The bad news is, you know, a little gradual dr summer drift down like a, in a canoe down isn't probably the most handsome, uh, wonderful event to have happen to this type of a spread. So we don't want drifting to our long strike. That's no good. That feels like, uh, you know, water torture or something like that, I think. So I always hated that when it would just drifted down and like, oh, let's peel another potato off the pile. 
right? Yeah, no, that is the that is sort of your worst case scenario here is that you have that lazy river drift right yep. down to your long strike. You don't necessarily get those ball pop opportunities to trade out of it. You don't get the sort of bang move that's really going to put your um your your long two options into play. Um, but you know, th this does provide a number of different scenarios depending on sort of how the market performs over time. Right. Now this is a good spread. Um, you know, clearly upsides patched we, we get that so we're not going to lose anything up there um and you have a little ability to trade this keep in mind in this example mark's got it on two by one okay so the most the the, the shortest delta we can get is a hundred deltas with that extra put a hundred short deltas and if you look at the, the the thing up here you can see where those deltas start to go to a hundred and you notice that that is as far as you'll get is a hundred deltas because you only have one extra put right and it can most it can go is, a, is, a, is to a hundred deltas right with that extra put so you can see it across the curve here so you know way down to, people have asked what do you do if the spiders open down at 200 you know on, on a huge gap well you know clearly you could sell your one put out and have it one to one and be done you could take the spread off you could buy 100 shares of stock right and that takes care of that 100 deltas you're done that's it now if what we used to do we would scalp that gamma we might buy the 100 shares of stock keep the spread on because now if this thing rebounds and rockets back up, I've got that extra hundred shares I can sell back out. And we used to call that scalping our gamma, right? So exactly. So that's sort of the advantage of having a back spread on is that you can sort of pay your theta. Typically a back spread, you're going to be you know paying out theta every day, yep. but you kind of compensate for that by buying stock when it's a little bit lower, selling right. when it's a little bit higher. And we use the same term, you scalp your gamma. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you can see again, let me just draw one more time here. You can see where theta tends to be the highest, right? It's right as you start getting near that 398 zone. What is that? That's the long option. So that's where theta is the hardest. And, and, you, and you have to really start, you know, treading water hard um, around there. So, um, and it, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's a nice position to have, but there's always a trade-off in options. It's like, you can't have it for free, right? There's always something you have to think about and, and do in order to manage this sort of inventory, right? Um, so, yep, this is a good one though. Yeah, uh, you know, you see this used a lot as a sort of, uh, you know, cheap tail hedge that people will put on. Right. Um, and that's why it's nice to, you know, doing the SPY here um, because, you know, you don't make a ton of money as the market goes up, but in theory, it's a, it's a hedge against your other positions. Right. Um, but you can kind of achieve it for relatively cost-effective, um, you know, and in fact, a credit um, yep. in this case. Right, no, that's good, okay. Awesome. Well, that's a good one, Mark. Anything else on that one? Or we're going to let that one uh, marinate in the pickle juice. No, let's let that one marinate in the pickle juice. I think, you know, some of those good. rules of thumb, 25 delta as the short leg, 10 delta as the two long ones. Yep. That's sort of those go-to levels. Um, and obviously important to continue to actively manage this one as time goes by. Yeah, maybe we'll do next time. Let's let's add in a, a little something. We'll talk about it after after this one, um, you and I. I. I got an idea for uh, building on that, that, that back spread. Um, Ooh, in a far, little wait. bit, uh, yeah. So we're gonna maybe add a little twist to this. All right. Well, good, Mark. Thanks much. Have a great rest of the week and weekend. We'll uh, see you next week, uh, Thursday. Market shot, eleven o'clock central. Sounds great. We'll see you all there. Bye.